I'm willing to bet you know someone who has a pet ball python, or maybe you've got one in your collection too. They're amazing animals. But what if I told you there are five snakes that make amazing pets and you probably don't even know they exist. Today, we're going over the top five underrated pet snakes. My name's Adam, this is Pikachu. You're watching Wicked's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. mistaking it, the most common pet snakes usually make the best pet snakes, but today we're going to go over five underrated ones that are underrated for reasons unknown. They actually make fantastic pets. Starting off with number five, Maclots pythons. Maclots pythons are severely underrated. In fact, there's very few channels on YouTube that are prevalent that you've even seen them on. My favorite thing about Maclots pythons is that they're semi-arboreal. You guys know I love semi-arboreal snakes and they get to a decent size, but not too big. We're talking about seven-ish feet is where they're gonna top out, somewhere around that area. And speaking of areas, where are they from? Well, Indonesia, New Guinea, that area of the world. Now these guys are very similar to another snake that isn't super popular but is gaining popularity, Savu pythons, from the same area, very similar type snakes. Maclots pythons, I just think, might make a better snake because they are a cheaper snake and they're easily bred in captivity. So I think we're gonna start seeing a lot more of that, especially since you're starting to see them on really cool channels like All Canadian Reptile Girl. So they're definitely getting a little bit more attention and I think you're gonna see that start to escalate as the years go on. I think the reason if I had to put something together for why they're not more popular than they are is just because they have a bad attitude for being a little bit uh, defensive, let's say. Maybe being a little bit cantankerous. And I think that they don't really deserve that credit to their name. I actually did a whole video about animals or reptiles that don't deserve their bad reputation. You can watch it right here and Maclots Pythons were on it. Before we move on with the video, a special thanks to this week's sponsor, Govi. You guys know I've used Govi forever. For as long as I've been keeping reptiles and into smart technology, I've been using stuff like this. And the new Govi Wi-Fi smart thermometer hygrometer is the cat's pajamas. This bad boy here connects right to your phone via Wi-Fi. Game changer. I don't have to be within a certain range. I can check from anywhere because it's connected to my home's Wi-Fi and I can check on the fly. Plus it's got free data storage for up to two years and you can export this into a spreadsheet. Maybe you throw this thing in an incubator. You can literally just use the lanyard and stick it on something. And because it has a fast and accurate Swiss sensor, you never have to worry about it being wildly off. And my favorite thing about this is the Govi Home app. You don't have to worry about a screen being on the actual device, walking down to your reptile room, picking it up and checking it. You're sitting at your desk or wherever you are, pull it up on your phone and you can take a look at the graphs. You can change things like the sensors. I love the alert function on this device. We've all heard horror stories of thermostats malfunctioning, it gets way too hot, and then that can lead to sick or dead animals. If you have one of these, you will never have that issue. Because even if your thermostat malfunctions, this guy is gonna send a warning to your phone, an alert to your phone to let you know that it's getting too hot or maybe that it's getting too cold. I stand behind this 100%. I appreciate Govi for sponsoring the video, but even if you didn't, I would still use these in every single enclosure that I have. If you're looking for something fun, something cool, something useful, and something that could save your animals' lives, this thing right here, the Govi Wi-Fi Smart Thermometer Hygrometer, is definitely for you. Moving on to something a little bit more common, but I still feel super underrated, number four, bull snakes or the entire family, pine snakes and gopher snakes. Pitophus, Pitophus, I always mispronounce it. Anyway, these three types of snakes, but we're gonna concentrate on bull snakes just simply because they are the most common, they're easily found, and you're not gonna have to be like, Adam, where am I gonna find a Sonoran gopher snake? You're gonna find bull snakes basically everywhere, and they're super cheap because there is more supply than there is demand. I do think that is changing. I think that they are becoming more popular, especially because of channels like Snake Discovery, which shows how amazing they are. Now, in terms of colubrids, if you're used to things like corn snakes or California king snakes or things like that, they're a little bit bigger than what you're used to. These guys can get all the way up to eight feet and they're thick. 
Now it's more common, you'll see them around six feet, something like that. They can get pretty big and they can get pretty thick. That is the thing that is most surprising to people about bull snakes is how thick they can get. So this is for someone who wants a colubrid that's a little bit bigger. They do have a little bit of a hissy attitude. Where they're from in the wild, which is parts of North America, by the way, you're gonna find them in the same sort of regions as you'd find things like rattlesnakes, and they look similar and they try to sound similar too. So they can sound pretty intimidating if they're upset. Now the cool thing with these guys, especially compared to the last entry, is there's lots of morphs. So there's albinos and then there, there's a whole bunch. And you can find them for pretty decent prices and they're pretty available especially if you live in a place like the US where you can ship pretty freely and pretty easily so I think that they're gonna catch on and we might even see more morphs coming into the hobby now I will try to say for each entry why I think they're not as popular as they could be or might become and with these guys I think it's that attitude I think people overhype their attitude and that's why I think if you get them as a baby like I mean right out of the egg all I can hear is diamond scratching He's jealous that he's not in the spotlight today. I think the big thing is that attitude is like really, I don't know, I think it's overhyped for sure. So as long as you tame them down when they're a manageable size, they're gonna be a less scary thing when they get to full size. And of course these guys do need a little bit bigger of an enclosure than a corn snake, for example. So it just might be a little bit more barrier to entry when it comes to the price of setting it up. But the feeding is similar to any other colubrid basically. So just a little bit bigger food because they're a bigger snake. Now the next snake on our list, I'm saying it's underrated in North America and Europe. Europe and places like that in Australia, you guys have them. They're definitely what they should be there. Number three, Woma pythons. Woma pythons are freaking awesome. They look so cool. In my opinion, they're like a poor man's blackhead python in that their body looks very similar. They do stay a little bit smaller at four to six feet, around five-ish, pretty normal, but they don't have that black head. And they also don't cost a small fortune in order to buy. Now they're not super easily found and they're not the cheapest thing in the world. I always mess up the prices because I'm here in Canada and everything is like inflated beyond imagination. Here you're gonna see them around four or 500 bucks. I'm wrong all the time. In the US, I guess I could just do a quick search on Morph Market and throw it right here how much you're gonna see them for. But I think that the popularity of them, I don't know why, I can't put anything together why they're not more popular than they are. They're very cool to watch, they're fun to watch, they interact very differently, they seem very curious, and they have that really cool head pattern, right? Just that scale. Their Latin name actually means shield bearer because they have that giant shield-like scale in the middle of their head or the top of their head. So if you want something maybe similar to a ball python that isn't a ball python, you'll find these guys to be kind of similar in terms of the size and body thickness and the way that you kind of set them up. I think the difference is the feeding response is incredible. Let's use that as a word. I'm talking about you should be using a hook to get these guys out because they think everything is food, which kind of is a good thing if you're one of those guys who thinks that ball python feeding strikes are a no-go for you and that's a reason you wouldn't get them. Totally understandable. You're not gonna have that issue with Wilma pythons if you're taking care of them properly. Plus, I just think the uniqueness factor, there's not really a ton of them out there, especially, I know I'm partial to North America just cause that's where I live, but I don't really see them in a ton of videos, but very few people are like, hey, come to see my snake. And it's, you know, not a corn snake or a ball python, it's a Wilma python. I've never had that experience in my life. Okay, number two, and something that is very unique and the coloration, I used it in a thumbnail and I got blown away by how many people wanted to know what it is. Number two, Bismarck ringed pythons. These things are wild looking. They look like, first of all, they're probably venomous because of their coloration, but they're not. They're a python. They come from the Bismarck archipelago, which you probably never even heard of until this video, likely, because I never heard of it until I found out what a Bismarck ring python was a few years ago. This python is so underrated and so unknown, even someone like me who's been obsessed with reptiles since I was a little kid, I didn't even find out about these guys until like somewhere right around the time I started this channel. And the only reason I found out about it is because someone said, hey, you never make videos about these guys, you definitely should. Now the ringed python as babies, you'll often see them with black heads and this black and yellow or black and orange pattern rather. Sometimes it's more stripey, most of the time it's ringed, hence Bismarck ringed python, but it does drab out. It becomes much more drab as they get older. I personally still think they look amazing, 
But I will warn you, although they can make really great pets, they take a little bit more work than some other species of snake. A little bit more delicate, maybe just a little bit more upkeep, but once you've dialed in their care, they can be amazing. And yeah, they do take more work than say a ball python to tame out, but if you get them as babies and you work on them so that they are handleable and not nippy and not defensive, you're gonna have a great pet snake. And even though that pattern looks so amazing as their babies and it kind of drabs out, I think that it could be a possibility that with enough line breeding, if you're into that sort of thing, you could keep the pattern a little bit longer. I'm very interested to see what the breeders of today of the Bismarck ringed python are going to do with this species. I don't know of any morphs or different colorations or phases, but it'd be very cool if somehow you could get them to keep a little bit of that color into adulthood. Something to keep an eye on and I mean, these guys are really cool pets and again, unique. If you have one of these, people are gonna be like, what the heck is that thing? And you're gonna be the only one of your buddies with one. Okay, okay, he was like literally tapping at the glass. We'll switch, this is Diamond. If you don't know if this is your first video, he's the star of the show and uh, let's just move on with the list. Number one, most underrated snake, Colombian rainbow boas. Now I know everyone knows about Brazilian rainbow boas and they are the more beautiful snake. I'm not gonna lie. The reason that I don't really uh, promote them that much is because I think they're not even intermediate. I think they're more of an advanced type species. Sure, as adults, their care becomes much easier, but as babies, they're very fragile. We're talking about if you leave the room and they knock over their water bowl and you don't come back for 24 hours, that might be enough that the humidity requirement and the need for water isn't there and they might croak. And I know people will say, oh, my cousin's brother's dog's landlord had one and it wasn't like that. L listen, that's great. Everyone that I know who has one of these or has written a care guide about them is gonna tell you as babies, they're super fragile. The reason that I'm promoting Colombian rainbow boas is because not only are they a little bit smaller, which some people like, we're talking three to five feet, but also they are the easiest to care for of all the genus. Epicrates, I, I always pronounce everything wrong. I'll put it right here. Of all the rainbow boas, this is the easiest because it is the driest tolerant. Now, just because they can go down to 50% humidity doesn't mean you should. I keep mine right around 70. Oh yeah, by the way, he needs a name or she. I don't even know what this, anyway, this is my rainbow boa. If you're a Patreon member, you knew about it. I've had him for, uh, I guess, two months now. I love him. He's ready to come out of quarantine and I'm gonna be setting up a really cool PVC enclosure. If you guys want it, throw it in the comment section below. A, what's this guy's name? And B, do you wanna see a video about how to set up a PVC for a very humid loving type of snake? Okay, okay, so why are they underrated? Well, first of all, the ease of care and comparison and the size and the fact that once they've done their babyhood, juvenileness, dumb words that don't make sense, once they're an adult, they're not gonna use too much height. So you don't need something arboreal, right? Like I think that BCIs and BCCs, boa constrictors, like the ones you see more commonly, should always have a little bit of height. Where these guys, you're okay to keep them in something that's one and a half foot tall. Give them climbing opportunities, I always recommend, but neither here nor there. I personally think, even though they're more drab looking than their Brazilian cousins, I think that they're just beautiful. And they actually do change. They get a little bit lighter at night. So during the day, they're pretty drab. And at night, their color changes a bit. And it's never going to be as iridescent and beautiful as a Brazilian. But I think Colombians are definitely not talked about enough. And there's a bunch of different morphs. You can find leucistics and you can find albinos. You can find a bunch of different types of these Colombian rainbow boas, which is very cool. And a Colombian rainbow boa that has a different morph don't fall off my shirt, please. Is super cool in my opinion. Now all rainbow boas can be a little bit nippy as babies, but you can tame them down. This one here has been doing a great job of allowing me to handle her. When I first got her, you know, you have to take her out of the cage with a hook because she will become very defensive in, but now I don't even have to worry about that. I open the lid, she's in a tub right now just cause she's in quarantine. And it's just kind of like, hey, what's up? We handling today? We're taking some pictures, what are we doing? And another thing, just I know this is a long entry, something very cool and I want to talk about because I want to mention it, parthenogenesis. These snakes are capable of parthenogenesis, which just basically means, I'll put it right here, but it basically means that they're strong independent women who don't need no man. 
to reproduce sometimes. Now, obviously it's easier, you know, when a man and a woman, Colombian rainbow boa, love each other very much, right? You know what I'm saying? But they are capable of parthenogenesis. And I think I've rambled enough about number one. What do you think? Do you agree with this list? Is there something that should have been on this list that isn't? Because if you're thinking, hey man, you didn't talk about Anteresia or Dumeril's boas or your bread and butter, I did a video like that right here. This is actually a part two and I didn't realize it until I was halfway done filming it. So you can watch that video also. What do you think the most underrated snake is? Toss it down there in the comments section and a special thank you to the Patreon supporters who got to see this video extra early. You got an extra video last week and the week before. Where are you going? If you wanna be a Patreon supporter and get discounts on the merch and cool stuff like that behind the scenes, Patreon knew about this rainbow boa months ago for as little as $1 a month, you can be part of the Patreon crew and Diamond and I would really appreciate it. All right, there you go. That's, uh, that's it. I think uh, plugged absolutely everything. Hit subscribe, hit like, really helps the channel, cost you nothing. And that means that I'll see you on Monday or two, Thursday. Thursday, I'll see you on Thursday.